Oh, Sherry saw it twice today. You watched oh. the same movie twice. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> These guys saw it twice. Where's Fran? Oh, she's going to use this. All right. Um, so, everyone, this is uh, Sherry Salm, if you don't know who she is. Um, she's an actress who's on a TV show called The Fosters that you may have seen. And uh, she was also in my very first feature, uh, Ambi Real. And she was also, you know, in Days of Our Lives, right? Mm. Million mm. years, or, or All uh, My Children. What the one hell? Life to one Life to Live? <laughs> one of those. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> well, that's how I met Sherry, actually. So um, she, um, she actually, did you audition? Didn't you audition? Yeah. 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 She auditioned, and she was stuck in soap opera hell. <laughs> and was like, dude, I will take cabs. I will, and she did, and she was amazing. And she was like, I, I can come. Can I come right now? Do you want me to come right now? I'll come right now, you know, and just shoot her scenes in my movie. And she was just such a. It's a great movie. I love that movie. It's still, it's still, it's my first baby. So, you know, I know you from narrative filmmaking. What was it like for you to make the leap to documentary? Did you feel like, oh, of course I can do this, or what was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. Um, still, even I'm like, ah, oh, could have done this. I could have nah, done that. Blah, blah, blah. You know. And but you no, said... I didn't. I had no idea what I was doing. And I called my friend um, Christina Calissimo, who had made this really great documentary called um, One Lucky Elephant. And she told me not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she was not the only person who's like, dude, I just want you to know this is crazy. You don't have any money. Um, um, you're, you don't understand what you're getting into. Mm. Like her, her movie took her 10 years to make. And um, she was like, wow, 10 years. She's like, yeah, 10 years. <laughs> Just get, that's what you're looking into, you know? And I was like, I guess, I don't know. And then I, and my dad's like, no, you have to do it. And my sister said, you have to do it. And even you, psycho <laughs> parts. Uh, yeah, a few people were like, you gotta do it. and. Um, Anyway, whatever it, you know, the, I think I feel like the film kind of chose me, um, uh, and and then you know she said a really a couple of very important key words of wisdom. She said, um, "You don't know what this story is about. You might think you know. You might think it's just like oh, you know, you sort of have this obvious linear story. Is he gonna make it? Right? That was just the beginning." And I said, really? She's like, just keep your eyes and ears open to what the story could become because you don't know. You don't know what themes are going to pop up. And it was the, probably the most important thing that she said because the entire journey, when I'd go get in the Mazda condo, I would, um, <laughs> I would, I would take my phone and I would record audio diaries so that I would remember because I knew it was going to be crazy when we got back and so that I would remember you know, what was going on. And I remember saying things like, Christopher is going to be a big part of this story. And I knew really early on that he was going to, if he stayed, you know, uh, if he didn't get kicked off or whatever, I knew he was going to be. I knew that family was going to be a big thing. I knew that Gabe and I talked about this a lot on the, while we were rolling together. And we talked about how we knew that the daddy issues were going to be like a conversation that would come up and that Gabe had really become the dad of the of this journey and I had become the mom and we would joke about it. <laughs> what, what would we say? We'd be like, I'd be like, so how are the kids today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? You would ask me sometimes and sometimes I would ask you because like sometimes he'd be the one who would be having conversations. Yeah, like bad cop or whatever and then yeah. sometimes it was me. Yeah. So... So, you know, I think that filming for lots of hours with a tight group of people, for, you know, many days or weeks is stressful even under the most, like, cushy Hollywood conditions. So was there ever a point where you felt like, this is going to implode? These, these are a lot of personalities. <laughs> I mean... Um, <laughs> every day? <laughs> it was going to implode probably before we got to Palm Springs. Oh, my God. How about God. before we left? Oh, well, well I'm just saying, from when we got, yeah, before we got to Palm Springs, we, need, we needed to have a group meeting because everybody wanted to kill one person. Yeah. And literally, we had to... 
<laughs> well, it started as one person, and then it transferred to a different person. To a different person, <laughs> right? Um, so I right can't imagine. The I mean, we, you know, in Hollywood, you know, on a bigger set and bigger budgets and all this, you have insurance are being paid well, and all these things are happening. But you guys are really just out there on a wing and a prayer, and it's just mm -hmm. extraordinary to me that you that you are all in one piece on the, on the end of the. Us too. Yeah. <laughs> I always, you know, I I always said that one of the proudest things that was accomplished through this journey that not one punch was thrown. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Not one punch was thrown. And, and it almost. Just, oh, uh, many, many. But there was one time when we were. There's so many things that aren't in the movie, <laughs> largely for uh, multiple reasons. But the, the largest, <laughs> biggest reason was because we didn't really have a film crew, as you may have noticed. It was just like, dude, grab your phone, shoot, you know? Or it was pitch black. <laughs> like we have some footage that's just like, it's not footage, it's just blackness and you hear voices. Like I remember one night, well, I think we were in Oklahoma and Angel and Christian were gonna, they were gonna finally hit each other. And I, I was like, oh my God, I gotta get this on camera. And I took my phone. <laughs> it was just completely black. And I was, and Gabe's like, I, you were like, no, dude, they're not gonna actually. I go, you know what? Let's get them boxing gloves. Remember? I, and I say it. I said it on the phone. I'm like, I'm getting you guys boxing gloves. We're just gonna do this. We're just gonna get a ring. We're just gonna go have it out. And and like Christian was standing outside, and Angel was inside, and he's like. Fuck you, man. Oh, yeah? You gonna do it? Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, come right here. <laughs> I was like, this is... And he did that every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. Like, I mean... By, by, by the time we got to Ohio, They I... were best friends. Oh, way, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, that's true. Oh, they, be geez. they became really... It was the craziest thing, which is not in the movie. Yeah. It was in the... It I was forgot in the about cut. that. I did not, because I had, that was one of the things I'm sad that we cut out of the story, um, which is that, uh, you know, Angel ended up getting a giant piece of respect for Christian. So, so this is not in the movie, but this is, and when they first met, they came to my place, and Christian, I had bought him a bottle of um, sweet wine, because he likes, like, sweet dessert wines, and he had been working really hard with me. We'd been working really hard to get ready to go. And I picked Angel up from San Diego and I brought him in my house and everybody was gonna stay with me for the night. <laughs> I mean, it's just so, the whole thing is so nuts. So they're like, so Christian comes out of my kitchen with the bottle and a glass, he's like, here boss. And he gives me a glass and he doesn't offer Angel one. And Angel was like, fuck you. <laughs> like, how dare you? And he didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. But in his culture, that is just, un that my culture too, and I immediately said, "Dude, get him a glass," you know, like, and um, and Christian was like, "I don't know, I don't know," and I don't know. <laughs> Christian, well, you guys, Christian has, he's 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 trusts things, and he's the, by the way, one of the smartest, oh. lovable, biggest-hearted people. Uh, actually, all of the guys, all of them, all of them. But Christian, I had, do you know what I went through to get that man's trust? Mm -hmm. What did I have to? Not just you. Oh, yeah. Uh, me and him almost had it yeah. out. <laughs> but, I mean. But, but, he's, but he is the most loyal oh. friend. Once, it's, once you're in with him, that's it. Done. Done. And he would do anything for any one of us. And I would do anything yep. for him. That's like, you know, he's, but you know, he's that guy. He's like, I don't know you. You know, like, hey, that's his thing. And uh, he just, he's, you know, he's bulletproof emotionally. He really is. And um, so anyway, that's how it started. And then that was it for Angel. He was like, nope. And then when Christian got Indy, Christian got Indianapolis and made one of Gabe's dreams come true, Angel really respected Christian after that. And he said, bro, I've been trying, he'd been trying also to get in, like he'd been trying to do lots of things. Everybody was always trying to do something. And uh, he was like. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. It was very impressive. It was a very impressive thing that he did. And um, and, and you guys don't know this, but uh, it wasn't in the film, but literally th that morning of Indy, I'm sleeping and it was kind of raining. It wasn't a great day. 
but you know the weather was going to hold off and he comes to me and he says get up and roll and I looked at him and I was like what he's like get up and roll I'm like I, I, it didn't, I was work. Speechless. It didn't work like that. We we just kind of went when Gabe finally felt right. Like, yeah. So I'm like, who the hell are you to tell me when to get up and roll? I was like, I say when we roll. And he's like, get the fuck up and roll. But he didn't tell me why. He didn't say why. He didn't say why. He, didn't he just tell said, me. get up and roll. And we had it out. I mean, you motherfucking son of like. He was the reason why I started smoking on the road. <laughs> we didn't show that either. Oh, we didn't show that either. We didn't show that either. Right, anyway. A lot of this stuff was in an earlier cut. So, we, so know, we had fun, the, right? that was the biggest fight, and that 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 fight was was like, I mean, that was the biggest one between me and him. Yeah. And um, and then he said to me, "You ungrateful son of a bitch! I just got you fucking indie," and I was like. Okay, I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm going to roll. But the damage was done. The damage was done. The damage was done. Yeah. And it was uh, it was heartbreaking. I really heartbreaking for him. Yeah. And um, he was really hurt and mortified by that whole situation. And Christian did not when he left. Uh, he did not stop working. He worked the whole time. He emailed me, texted me, worked with me, and he went to go see his father. So he. How long was he gone? From Ohio. So we only had 600 miles left. So, uh, Columbus. But he, uh, yeah, it was just a lot. It was a lot. That of was it, hard. It was a, it was a very hard thing. But, you know, God bless that man. He's my brother now, forever. Yankee, all of them. They're all my little brothers now. I'm the oldest. Well, I have to say that kind of a, I mean, it's inspirational for so many reasons, obviously, but one of the, one of the big takeaways for me, oddly, was how much I kind of fell in love with America again, you know, like, I just have this, all this kind of bad feelings every day when you're reading the news, and, you know, whichever side of the line you're on, but it just kind of warmed my heart, going, this is the America that, that I really believe is there, and the support and the love and the, that you've got on the road was just extraordinary. It's an important so point, because when we first cut the film, it was funny, I, I, our producer Sharon, who's not here right now, one of our other producers, um, when she saw um, a relatively early cut, um, that was the very first thing. She said, Lisa, do you know what you made? I was like, what do you mean? It was messy. And she said, this is a movie about our country. This is about who we can be. This is what we are. You don't see that the threads of what we, what this country is about, that, that this is about unification. This is about coming together. And I was like, I mean, yeah, okay. You know, I mean, I knew it sort of, but I just kind of wasn't thinking of it as deeply as that. Yeah. We felt it. We lived it yeah. daily. I mean, I cried almost every single day. Almost every single day I was... Sometimes when the camera is shaking, it's shaking because I'm crying because of something so moving that someone said or something someone did that was so touching, you know. And um, I mean, what a we got stopped every, every day, single, <laughs> every and day. and we got stopped. I mean, it started. It's <laughs> Remember, we were sweating. That was like our very first day of rolling. <laughs> That was like a crazy day. It's too bad we don't couldn't get everything. Yeah, we, but it was, it was literally just, from day one, people, people heard. They, they heard, heard. They heard, and we were like, "How did they hear?" Uh, we were, we all were on lo news. local news. Local news. Lo like, again, Christian, Christian Link. He was running around calling. There's a, and then we couldn't get any for a while, so we started doing really funny stuff. We like would pretend that we were somebody else. On, I'm driving down the side of the road. There's a dude in a wheelchair. We would call. <laughs> like, we would just call like we would call radio stations and and uh, TV stations, and we did it ourselves. We had to get creative because we weren't getting through. But we definitely didn't call on the I-10. That we didn't we call that We did cop. not call the cops. That cop. That cop who came twice. We didn't shoot both times. We uh, yeah. he came twice. <laughs> But like literally every single day, some crazy thing would happen. Like the first day that we rolled, Gabe and I were alone because we were, I don't know where the guys went, but you know, the communication structure wasn't quite in place yet. And I didn't know what I was doing. Nobody knew what we, 
we didn't know what the hell we were doing, right? I'm like, I don't know. At first, we had the RV drive behind us and then the car in front of us, and we're like, this is not going to work. <laughs> <We can't." laughs> so like, I was like, oh, we'll be sandwiched between them and we'll be protected. Like, we don't have the money for the fuel for this activity, and that thing is so big, right? So I was like, okay, forget that. And then I was like, oh, what do we, how, all right, let me think. You know, I have a little bit of an AD background, an assistant director background, so I'm a decent planner, but this was like a foreign situation. I don't know. I was like, just pull this stuff in the RV. Let's go. Yeah. So um, finally, I sort of figured out the best plan, and Gabe and I actually discussed this a lot. Why don't we just have the RV find a place to stay and get ready, like, you know, depending on the terrain, they would de that would depend how far they would go ahead of us and how he was feeling that day. Like if he said, Lee, I don't think I could do more than 10 miles before my first break because of the heat or the weather, whatever. And then so we would say, okay, you know, Streeter and Angel go drive up about 10 miles, prepare food. And so that's what they would do. And they would go par and, and then Yankee would just like be with, like two miles away always. And his, his nervous Nelly would just, you have to go over home. I love you. I'll talk to you so much. I love Hi. Smell. By the way, she's the biggest badass Porsche designer. Like she does the design of Porsches, the number one right off the line. Anyway. Okay. Well, I'm Smelly. gonna get you back. I'm gonna get you back to yeah. the. Okay. To the anyway. Neighbor. So um, I saw. I mean, obviously you had your amazing crew, and it looks like they took extraordinary care of you in all these really scary situations. Did you ever need to stop for for real medical care anywhere? Because that just looked brutal so many times. Uh no, we did. Uh we. After after I got hurt in New Mexico, uh, the next day we didn't roll. Mm -hmm. two um, days. For two days we didn't yeah, roll. Yeah, we didn't roll for two days. Okay, for for two days we didn't roll, um, and then uh, the last break we took was in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So I went nonstop from Oklahoma to New York oh, wow. without taking a break. Mm -hmm. But wow. that was really the only mm -hmm. day those two days that I. I we almost did though. We almost did. We almost went to a hospital. We almost remember. We were gonna right. at least try to get a cortisone shot. Right. We, there was a lot of discussion right. about mm -hmm. what you know. The only person who ever needed right. medical treatment was Streeter. <laughs> he got bit by a brown recluse spider. <laughs> wow. uh, right. Yeah. Right. Wow. So fortunate prayers really helped. We really you know? prayers were serious mm -hmm. on serious. our trip. Like we had people praying for us all the time, prayer circles, people would come and side of the road and say prayers with us and it was just. But don't get me wrong, I was in pain every day. I was in pain just watching. <laughs> so I right, I was in pain every day, uh, but tolerable. You looked really good though. You like, you always look super healthy and fit and like bright eye, like how is this guy doing this? I mean, it, it was just astonishing to me. The people in this country, Yeah. our crew, my parents. Mm. That, that's one of the ones that I was like, blah, what are you your know, mom and your dad at the end? Redemption. Mm. I had many reasons to keep yeah. going, you yeah. know, but, but really every day, the people who stopped us every day, I was like, oh, this is what it's about. It's not yeah. really about me. Mm. It's really about the effect mm. that I'm having on people. Um, that's what it was really yeah. about. Uh, and then uh, on a technical whatever side, what was what did you use other than I, iPhone? What was the camera? Uh, we had about seven different things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Because, uh, see, so there's footage that I acquired. There was another director that was going to, I don't even know what he shot on. He, he shot the stuff in the pool and the stuff in the hospital. And so I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know what that camera was. But it was so, much nicer than what I had. And so that was a nice camera. I'm going to guess it was some sort of Panasonic something. It was pretty, <laughs> I don't know, it was an SD card and then, or a big one, like a nice one. And then I shot another Panasonic that was another good, really nice card. And then we took my crap cameras. What well, we shot, oh, we went, oh, we did Love and Suicide. Although I, you, you ended up oh, chopped on Love and Suicide. But it's we so went to Cuba together. And so those cameras, I yeah. still had those. Aww. So I used them. Wow. There it is. <laughs> so they had those. And I had a Canon uh, uh, 60D that my friend Michelle let me use, GoPros, iPhone, Galaxies, Android. Oh, I had this little teeny tiny handy cam that got broken. Somebody like ran it over by accident or whatever and it, it, was, it wasn't working anymore. But I did get a lot of footage. That was a lot actually, that camera. And I had one other 
little tiny art is just our post-production uh, master who they, uh, um, yeah, Hot Pixel who mixed our film and did all of the sound design and the color is, he's here today. So he, uh, he's just hearing this getting squirming with all the codecs, oh, no. just squirming thinking about all those codecs. It was a challenge. Yeah. Okay. It was yeah. a challenge. Yeah. And what was uh, your, who were your, your early sponsors? How hard was the, 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 the first money for the film? I mean, the first money called me. Yeah. So it was really weird. I was thinking, he was determined to leave on um, April 1st. He's like, Lisa, I'm leaving. I'm getting in my car with my $700. I'm leaving. And I'm going to take my nephew, and I don't care. We're going to, I'll figure it out. Hmm. He really, he was serious. I was like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait a second. <laughs> you know? And so, um, and I met you on like February, I think, like right around Valentine's Day. It was, yeah, I'm, we met like six, seven weeks before we left. Yeah, and I said, no, I can't help you. And then I said, no, like a week went by and he kept checking in. You know, we, he was like, hey, uh, and he, he was pretty persistent actually in checking in. <laughs> so, hey, because I was up for a job. And I thought if I get this job, then, you know, I'm taking the job, dude. And so I guess the universe didn't want me to have a job. And so um, I told him, listen, I'm going to make you an Indiegogo video, and we'll just see what happens. So we put the video out on Facebook, and, um, you know, didn't really, not much. I, put, I asked for $200,000, because I wanted to have a crew, you know? And, like, we got, like, 500 bucks, and then it was, like, 1,000. And mind you, I, I finished the video um, at the end at the beginning of March. So that's when the video, so, and he's leaving on April 1st. So I'm trying to raise $200,000 in one month. So then my coach from high school calls me and he's like, hey, Jim Rat, what are you doing? See, so you're going across the country. What's, what's going on? I saw your video. So he's like, I can, I can get you like 10 grand. So he, get, he got 10 grand through this, uh, this company, my coach, Alice. And then uh, the spine doctor guy, Dr. Alan Mulliken. And just a quick story on that one. And oh, this made, is a crazy story. It that made our hairs rise. It did. It really did. Um, so, so we go. So, her friend calls her, Louis, and says, uh, "You know, uh, Louis. Louis. Louis Morrow. Yeah, Louis. Calls her, says, "I have a friend. Uh, he's a doctor. He's a spine doctor, and um, he wants to sponsor you guys. He wants to give you. He wants to let you borrow his RV, his <laughs> monster RV." And we were like, no way, no way. <laughs> two days before we were leaving, he calls, and his, yeah. his lawyer said, you know, there's too many legalities. It was it, way too nice. We would have destroyed right. it. You can't do it. <laughs> but he still wants to help. <laughs> he wants to give you $5,000. Yeah. All you got to do is come up to his office, let him check you out, mm. and he'll give you $5,000. That's it. Yep. So that was who was in the... Yeah. So he wanted to make sure that Gabe was all right. Right. He actually wanted to see right. how he was. So, so we went up there, and we're all in a room, all crammed in a room with the cameras and stuff like that. And he walks in, and I'm looking at him. And in my head, I'm like, this guy looks familiar. Start it and stop it. Oh. Right? This guy looks familiar. And, and I'm looking, and I'm just like, right now, I'm, my brain is rocking, and I'm looking at this guy. And then the moment he walks out, I turn around and I said to them, I know this guy. I don't know from where, but I know him. And then he comes back in and I said, uh, where did you go to school? He goes, um, um, NYU. Um, and I said, around what year did you have your residency? He said, uh, 1992. And I said, he goes, when did you get into your accident? I said, 1992. He goes, I said, where was your residency? He goes, at the Rust Institute. I said, I was at the Rust Institute. He was the doctor who came in every single morning Holy as a resident. Shit. Check in. Yep. yep. He was the doctor 25 That's years ago. It was amazing. It we was, were like this. Even Louis. Louis was there, too. Louis right. was like this. We were all like. <laughs> when that happened, I was like, this is meant to be. Yeah. This is just meant to be. Yeah. And that was, that was like, anyway, and then we got uh, Connect to sponsored us later. I don't, I don't remember who, I don't remember how, we got like 10,000 from Indiegogo. We got the 10,000 from Coach and, and the, the company that he was working with. We got the five from Alan. 
and then my dad gave me five. Mm -hmm. So that was 30. So I was like, okay, I guess we have to leave now. Yeah. <laughs> That's and then fantastic. we just kept getting That's like five fantastic. bucks on the side of the road. People would just go, you know, we had postcards. I, I made postcards so that we at least had those to be like, if we got stopped or something, we'd be like, look, we're doing this. And they'd be like, oh, like, especially the cops. We always had to get, look, you can look it up. It's real. Here's an app. We did, you know, we had someone, Sue, Sue Zimmerman made that app with Dana Lynch yeah. and uh, um, Jen Puckett. They, they were doing social media for us. They were, everybody was, it, when you, it took thousands of people thousands of people like I would say that it took as many people to make our movie as it took to make Titanic <laughs> wow. yeah maybe more mm -hmm. yeah any questions from anybody yeah I want to know how Lisa survived with all the guys yeah. with the other <laughs> <laughs> and she them. Yeah. yeah um did you give them a training no, we had no time. In fact, I got Angel the day before we left, Streeter the day before we left. Um, I didn't know, we didn't know each other at all, really. Uh, I met Chris Cowis uh, two days before we left, or the, no, the day before we left, I met Chris. How did um, you gather this group together? Uh, Anyone who said yes. Yeah. <laughs> if, you were, if you were breathing. If you were breathing, the, and you, and had you a were okay license. with going five miles an hour, <laughs> Like Chris Yaku said, at the pace of sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if you were okay with that, with no pay, you, then yeah. you were you were perfect. Yeah, yeah. You were qualified. If you had three months of time to, to share, <laughs> right? You were qualified. They didn't know it was going to be that long, and and you know, it was very hard for them yeah. because I think they everyone thought you know I could do a month and a half or. Mm -hmm. And then when it kept extending and extending and extending, I think everyone started to get very prickly. And um, at the same time, as we got closer, it was kind of getting exciting, right? Yeah. So it, it was a very interesting push and pull of like, and um, it was really quite cr crazy. But uh, for me personally, I mean, it's funny. We had another woman that was gonna go on the trip with us. And it wasn't until I explained to her what I imagined the situation was going to be like <laughs> um, that I realized what I was getting myself into. Because <laughs> I was telling her, I'm like, listen, dude, you know, I know you're a vegetarian and you have all these food things and like your girl products and your stuff. And like, this ain't going to be that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this shit is going to be a mess. Like, one little bag. Because we had nowhere to put it. I had a little bag, one bag. And she's like, you're not going to get to like do your hair or anything. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be like. Well, how did y'all shower? We sometimes didn't. I went, I think one day. I, I took went, bed baths. I, he took bed baths. So I'd bring him a little warm thing of water and he would just do it like, you know, wash up, to wash yeah. up the best he could. And then like, I mean, I know I went at least five days one time without taking a shower. I did the old, you know. Just, you know, going to the local fucking Burger King and just, you know. <laughs> so I didn't, I, I guess I felt like I was like, well, I'm go I guess I'm going to war, you know. It's like it felt like a, war, a little war to me. Um, but, you know, I had my Mazda condo. So, and everyone's like, oh, I can't believe you slept in your car. I was like, um, my car was awesome. <laughs> that was my little chill time, you know. So, uh, any other questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Any regrets? Oh, no. No. Uh, the only uh I know it's funny, but I wish I would have taken longer. Just to, ex just to extend, you know, the experience, because it was the richest. It was, those 100 days was the richest 100 great days I could possibly ever live in my life. Possibly ever live, and I wish could have been longer. We have the same chair, and I was lamenting the block and a half. It took five months to have to find a closer spot. <laughs> and you felt, oh, you have the same chair. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you can you can actually speak to the ridiculous insanity. Well, let me tell you guys, I've known Gabe for several years, and prior to this movie, I always thought he was kind of a panty waste. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I have known him for many years, and uh, I knew he was strong, but honest to God, I couldn't be more proud. It was, it was incredible what you did. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah.
as, they, as good as amazing as your journey was, did they have to rebuild, rebuild your chair every so many? I mean, I just can't imagine a chair like that was made for that kind of a trip. Well, you know, listen, you know, these chairs nowadays, I mean, the one I had was titanium, so it wasn't going to break. I was going to break before the chair. Um, you know, but... As far as axles, bearings, No, nothing, you know. We had to clean the casters a couple times. I mean, yeah, just just little, like, oil chair, you know. That's testament right there. Oil it, but, you know, really the only thing that gave way was the back. We, we, uh, we switched out the back. Uh, but otherwise, um, one flat tire, um... That's it, through the whole entire, you know. Mm. I had a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brittany. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, it was just so incredible. I was just in shock the whole entire time. But when you rolled in here after the movie, I'm like, okay, you look like 20 years younger. What happened? <laughs> I'm like, what's I look, happening? In there? Yeah, like, I look 20 yeah, years younger? You came, I'm like, hold on, did he just come from a time machine? <laughs> 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 so, like, how was, like, that whole recovery process after, like, you, you just made it to the mark and then like but how was like the recovery process after that like you know you was in a lot of pain right so so you know i you know you're the first person to ask this question and i'm probably going to be it's the first time i'm going to say this overall not just physically um once i finished it was relief that i finished and then um and then i i was started to become aware of all the little pains. Um, and then I crashed real hard. I crashed real hard because I woke up, once I got back to California, I woke up and I had nothing to do. Like, I, I didn't know what to do with myself because for the last year, I was, I was, like, I was just like a machine and just tunnel vision. And uh, I, uh, I, fell off, I fell off the wagon. Uh, mm -hmm. three separate occasions, literally, literally right after I got back because I was so lost mm -hmm. and I got warned. You know, I spoke to a couple of people who have done stuff like this. Cause the high is so high that when it's done, it's, it's a drop back to reality. Um, but it was three separate incidences. Um, but you know what? Um, I got over that. It was fine. Um, I still deal with a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, but manageable, and um, but yeah, it was. I didn't think it was going to be that difficult to uh, bounce back from after the roll. It was hard for the whole team. for everyone. Everybody, yeah. everybody, and I. I would call you. I called you quite a bit the first month, checking yeah. in, checking in. How are you? How are you doing? Right. And you know, because I knew. You know, I know what it's like. I mean. If you make a film, it's like that. You know, when you make a theatrical film, you, you have this high, you're with this group of people and your show. I mean, oh my God. I still think when I saw the end of your show in the picture, <laughs> I just, I mean, did this, you become a family and now you're just suddenly not gonna see you, each other anymore. And Gabe, like his kids left and went off to go do stuff and like my kid and like everything. So I think, but for him, of course, it was, much bigger, and I was worried about him all the time, pretty much. And uh, yeah, but did, but now you can be just. But then I consumed, you know. And yeah. then once I was like, okay, well, I need to do something because well, this that is was not the good. big thing that you told. We were talking a lot. Like you're like, I got to do something, Lee. What am I gonna do? Yeah. That was the big conversation right. all the time. And then he said Palestine. So the fa following year, I did uh, Israel. Then the year yeah. after, I did Long Island. Yeah, and then I took a break, and then just well, couple like two months dad, ago, you didn't I take did. A break. Right, I had to take care of my dad, and mm -hmm. then um, just a couple of months ago, I did Pikes Peak. Um, Talk about that. Yeah, Pikes well, Peak. Well, yeah. Pikes Peak. Let's see. It was thirteen miles. Yeah. Uh, it's fourteen thousand one hundred fifteen feet elevation. Uh, I did it in a nine and a half hours. Uh, no one's ever done it before, unassisted in a manual wheelchair. So, which was very shocking to me that no one has ever done it with all the extreme sports that we have today. Right. For sure, but no one did it, so, so you know, I can check that one off the list. How'd you get down? Uh, no, listen, I said, I'm crazy, I'm not stupid, <laughs> okay? There's a difference. I took the van down. I took the van down. <laughs> Yeah, how, how did you deal with that like, on, on the, like the Appalachians and stuff? 
uh, right. Or special wheel or just no, 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 yeah. right here. Wow. These are my. I went There's through no hundred. No modification. I, you wow. know, you saw I went through hundred and ninety-eight pairs of gloves. Yeah. You know, and a lot of them were worn all the way through because of downhill. I got my fastest. I got clocked out was twenty-seven miles an hour. Oh, wow. um, and and listen. What, the only thing that's good about it is that I'm making up a lot of time that I lost going uphill, but it was not fun going that fast downhill. And I'm so upset that we didn't get not one, me flying off the chair, not one. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was. You could do some reshoots. Yeah. I actually, no, she said I actually that. did. She said I actually, we didn't do, Let's just do one more time. We didn't do anything. That's the, that's the only. That's the thing about this story is someone asked me in yesterday the interview in New York. I was in New York. That's right. Holy shit. <laughs> this morning, um, uh, they said, "How is it to work with actors in your documentaries?" I'm like. I don't. <laughs> There's no, that shit happens like that. There's no, like, I just was like, okay. No, but yet, Gabe, is that an actor? And, and are you still pursuing? That yeah, I, I do, I do. I, I pursue, you know, uh, I've been really focused on my motivational speaking yes. in the last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, acting is like second mm -hmm. for me right now. Yeah. But absolutely, mm -hmm. I still go on on auditions. Excellent. This know? guy has but a this question. Guy, yeah. What a question, yeah. Um, how did you get involved um, with your Israeli um, track, and um, what were some of the highlights of that? Well, so, okay, um, you know, my parents are Palestinian, and so growing up, you know, uh, I was born, you know, I was born in North Africa, came here, but growing up, you know, we never really heard about the, too much of the terrorism like we do now, but if you heard about it, it was really about the Palestinians and Israelis, and so, and that, and it really affected my parents any time there was a war happened there and people would die. It doesn't matter which side, it really affected them. And, and so for as long as I've known, I've always wanted to do something that had to do, involve with that. My first idea was to roll across the Middle East, but then I thought, I do not want to be a martyr. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, but so I did that just because it was close to home. It was close to home um, and when we went there, it was 2014. That's when there was an all-out war. Over a thousand people died. No one wanted me to go. I wanted to go. I wanted to do what we did with the, the Mazda condo. I wanted to put Palestinian Israeli flags on there, roll for peace, and, and um, you know, me and the guys, we talked about it, and it was about safety more than anything. I wasn't allowed to go. She didn't go. He wouldn't let she, You wouldn't let me. He goes like this, you're not going, Lee. You're not going. You said it 50,000 times to me. Okay. And I'm like, well, wh what do you mean I'm not going? He's yeah. like, yeah, well, Lee, you know, there's bombing going on. I'm like, oh, but it's okay for you to go, though. Anyway, I let him be chivalrous. Yeah. And then so, I got a gig anyway. Right. So we went there, and I can't tell you, um, you know, it's my first time in Israel. I got to tell you how safe it is. I felt so safe being there. So safe. Um, the people were incredible but we were low-key we weren't wearing shirts we didn't have the flags the way we wanted to we didn't really make the scene um, you know like the way we wanted to but we did it you know people people said to us just go and roll if they stop you they stop you and so we didn't get stopped once you know uh, we got written up in the Times of Israel so that was great Palestinian American comes to roll for peace so I love I love because a lot of the headlines when I was rolling across America, drug addict rolls across. <laughs> That's what I was, I was the drug addict yeah, who yeah, did yeah. this. Yeah. You know, and, and remember that one time in Columbus, in Columbus when the, the Columbus Dispatch wrote, and the, it was drug addict rolls across America, and I got so upset, you know? Instead of saying recovering, <laughs> how, pick any other word. Just something. Yeah. How about anything? Person. But it was a great experience. Great experience. Well, How many years ago was this? We don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, 
couple years ago, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a 20 or anything like that. A couple. Are you not going to tell her? She has the all right, 2013. I don't want any. I want it to stay timeless. Listen, as long as I keep rolling, it will be timeless. Yes. All right, 2013. As long as I continue to roll, this movie will always be relevant. It will yeah. always be relevant anyway. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it is. It, we intentionally tried to make it as timeless as we could. Right. Yeah. So, you know, Rocky still works, right? Yeah. Uh, this is an extraordinary achievement. Both of you, your crew, everything incredible. And what what are your plans next for the movie? Before we have to go, no, we have to go. The plans. To, to put They're the not. Ki they'll kick us out. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. Uh, um, the plans for the movie. It's coming out on Netflix this weekend. You want to tell yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 Hi, Ray. Hi, Ray. Hey. Say hi, everybody. Hello. We're Facebook Live right now. Right oh, now. Wow. I wish I would have known. I would have been looking down. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a kind of a great time to announce this. So, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow night at midnight, go into your Netflix queue yes. and get it. And even though you already saw it, you should see it again. Yes. And maybe yes. have a little party at your house yes. and send us videos of you with your friends and family watching Roll With Me. That's because uh, that's when it's gonna be my next, I'm sorry, I'm like a social media slut right now. <laughs> and I apologize in advance that's for- That's the only way to get anything done. You gotta get it done, process. man. I'm, I'm like, and I, you know, I would do anything for this movie. This is my, my baby. There's always word of mouth. And that's where you all come in. Yeah. Yeah. Word of mouth, please tell a friend, please get, do a little party, right. tell your family. Go on Facebook. Please friend us on Facebook on uh, the Roll With Me uh, USA. If you go to Array Now and you click on their films, um, right now the Roll With Me banner, when you go to Array Now, it's, it's on there. Just click on it and you'll go to our page and you'll see where local screenings are. So if you have family in other places, there's local screenings there and you can see all the press we've been Array's done, um, Mercedes and Tulane and Ava, the whole team, have just been yeah, it's crazy. rock it's stars. Crazy. Just, uh, it's getting crazy. It's I'm, getting crazy. It's good crazy. We love, this is what yeah. we dream of. This is what we've worked for. So. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Hi, the diehard Foster <laughs> fan crew. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so my